Western Ghats are uh, the two biodiversity hotspots that was uh, marked out in India and uh, these are the two places that was uh, supporting enormous amount of uh, species be it both flora as well as fauna and uh, more than 70% of it are at a threat of extinction right now and uh, is a cause of concern and this is something that uh, uh, should be kind of uh, taken up at a war footing right now because uh, what we as a human civilization are going through is a six mass extinction okay which basically means that according to uh, the latest UN report the IPBS report that came out in 2019 more than one million species are at a threat of extinction Okay. And that basically means that um, uh, there is life being destroyed every second here because of the changing climate. Now, what was told earlier as a climate change is now being called as a climate crisis. When people talk about saving Mother Nature, and that's also something that we that drew us in, saying that okay, let's do something for the environment, let's save Mother Nature, but Having lived here, in the forest, with the forest for so long, uh, I've realized that you know you, the forest does not need saving. Mother Nature does not need saving because it evolves. It is us whose time on this planet is in question right now. And it is actually a human existential crisis where due to the changing uh, climate, and uh, the increasing amount of uh, natural disasters, um, we will face mass displacement. And the worst affected are the ones who uh, we may say are the marginalized communities, the poor folks. Um, and it is completely degenerative and it is unsustainable. We need to really look beyond this concept of uh, GDP we need to start talking about what we say here as GNA, which is gross uh, natural abundance, wherein uh, you may not have a fancy car, you may not have a tall concrete building, but if you have a garden that's abundant with flowers and food that you can eat, and that's supporting like the bees, the butterflies, you know, and a lot of other uh, biodiverse life forms, that person should be considered as a rich person versus someone um, who lives in this tower with something that's dead all around you.
there are two projects that uh, we are working very closely with the community. One is your uh, waste management project where uh, we are uh, looking to own up the entire waste management for our community, for our village. Uh, we have been composting the village uh, organic or the biodegradable waste for the last four years. Now uh, we've also started managing the dry waste and also in, uh, inculcating a habit of holistic waste management or decentralized waste management where we own up uh, the waste that is here and start looking at it as a resource and then also uh, look at reducing a consumption so that waste does not get generated in the first place itself. So that's one engagement that we are looking at because uh, uh, we realize that that has to be one of the first or the lowest hanging fruit uh, that we're trying to solve out here because uh, the river that we see right now, okay, this, uh, you can say the babbling brook was actually a uh, a dumping chute okay when we first came in here you couldn't stand here because all you could see was thrash and it took us nine months just to kind of clean up this river and with a few uh, permaculture initiatives okay we managed to revive a river that was dead and we call this the sumsumauni khola in nepali and uh, so this river gives us a lot of joy and a lot of music whenever we stand and listen to it flowing by uh, we are uh, in a way, we feel blessed to be part of this community because they've been very, very supportive of this idea. When we decided to clean up the river, uh, there was a time when the entire community kind of jumped into the river along with us. Right? So even now, whenever we start any initiative of, let's say, making a village zero waste or trying to encourage them to kind of go and do the waste segregation, I would say 90% of them are up for the idea. There would be this odd 10% that will stand apart for a while, be on the other side of the fence, but they will come around. So this particular project right now supports close to about 15 families okay, who work directly with us. And also there are about uh, 40 different uh, families that we have an indirect impact upon uh, with the uh, small farmer project that we have. I think more than anything else, the idea is to revive the love of the soil of the rivers for the community so that they start going back to uh, almost like a pagan way of living where earlier we used to worship the rivers here we used to worship the stones you know that was the uh, religion that the indigenous tribal people followed here when you do that i think there is no conflict that comes between man and nature when we see people living in harmony i think uh, we can spend a much longer uh, time in this beautiful place that we call home, planet Earth.